This video will show the Holdings Editor in Sitka's Evergreen. The Unified Holdings Editor is used in this video. To access the Holdings Editor, select the record the item you wish to edit is attached to. On the Item Table tab, click Edit underneath the barcode of the item you wish to edit. If you're adding new holdings, you can use the Add Holdings button. Before using the Holdings Editor for adding or editing holdings, we recommend setting up preferences and holdings templates. To access the Holdings Editor preferences, open the Holdings Editor for any item and then click on the Preferences tab. The screen is divided into Holdings Preferences and Item Attribute Settings. The Holdings Preferences relate to call numbers and barcodes. By default, Hide Generate Barcodes, Hide Use Check Digit, and Hide Item Part are checked to hide those settings in the Holdings Editor. Information on specific preferences can be found in the Holdings Preferences section of Sitka's Evergreen documentation. The Item Attribute settings control which item attributes display in the Item Attributes section of the editor and how some of them behave. When Change Circ Lib when Owning Lib changes is checked, Evergreen will do as described and update the circulating library to match when the owning library is edited. You can also set a default organizational level at which to display available item statistical categories. Circulate as type, quality, and add edit item tags are hidden by default as these are not used in Sitka's Evergreen. Additionally, some item attributes relate to features that are not used by all libraries. These are loan duration, Fine level, age based hold protection, floating, deposit, deposit amount, and cost. Check any of these that are not applicable to your library. You can always add them back if your library starts using a feature related to one of these attributes. More details about specific item attributes can be found in the Item Attribute Settings section of Sitka's Evergreen documentation. Evergreen will automatically save your changes. Click on the Holdings tab to see how the preferences have been applied. I now have only the item attributes that my library uses displaying. To access the Holdings templates, open the Holdings Editor for any item. Alternatively, you can go to Administration, Local Administration, Holdings Template Editor. This interface uses the old Holdings Editor. This video will demonstrate creating and using templates with the new Holdings Editor. Holdings Templates, also sometimes referred to as Item Templates, allow you to set up templates with pre-selected values for item attributes and help to ensure consistency in the cataloging of items. Which item attributes display on the Holdings tab will depend on what you have set on the Preferences tab. To create an item template, enter the values for the item attributes needed for your template. Shelving location and circulation modifier are item attributes that are commonly included in templates. Attributes with a value of yes or no will be set to their default value and the circulating library is set to the location your workstation is registered at by default. So only include these attributes in your template if you need them to be different than the defaults. Type in a name for your template and click Save. Templates are saved to your user account. Repeat this process to create additional templates. To use a Holdings template, on the Holdings tab of the item you're creating or editing, select the applicable template from the drop-down menu and click Apply. The updated attributes will be highlighted in green. Make any further edits needed and then click Apply All, Save and Exit. Templates are only viewable by the staff account that created them, but they can be shared with additional staff. Before sharing templates, we recommend setting up all the templates you and other staff may need using one staff account. 
This helps ensure staff will be using the same templates when cataloging. While there are import-export buttons for holdings templates in the holdings editor, a bug currently prevents templates from being imported properly through this interface. Instead, holdings templates should be exported and imported using the holdings template editor, accessed by going to Administration, Local Administration, Holdings Template Editor. To share the templates, click Export. This exports a file which contains all the holdings templates created on your account. You will be prompted to choose a location to save the file. Depending on your library's setup, you may be saving the file to the computer's hard drive, a network drive, or an external device like a USB. To import the file of templates, log in to Evergreen with the account of the staff member who the templates are being shared with. You can do this on the same computer or a different one. Go to Administration, Local Administration, Holdings Template Editor. Here, click Import. You'll be prompted to locate and open the file. The imported templates will now display in the template drop-down menu in the Holdings Editor when creating or editing items. Repeat this process for all staff who need to use the templates. If the templates are updated in the future, you'll need to export and import the new version of the templates to applicable staff. Evergreen will override any old templates with the new templates if the template name matches. The top section of the Holdings Editor is the Holdings Details. This is where you can add and edit call numbers and barcodes. Owning Library is the location the item belongs to. If you're a multi-branch system, you can change an Owning's Library to be a different branch. Use the pen icon to edit the Owning Library. When adding new holdings, use the plus icon to add additional rows to create multiple items with different Owning Libraries. The classification scheme tells Evergreen what classification you're using for your items, which affects how they're sorted in the shelf browse. The options are Dewey, Library of Congress, Generic, and National Library of Medicine. The call number label field is where you enter the call number that applies to your item or items. Depending on which classification scheme is set as your default, this field will pre-populate with the value in the mark record from the 082 subfield A or 050 subfield A, if there's a value in the field, and then can be edited. The call number entered here is specific to your library. You can set up call number prefixes and suffixes that then display as a list for catalogers to select from. They can be used to ensure more consistency in cataloging. These prefixes and suffixes are displayed as part of the call number and included when printing spine labels. If you don't use prefixes and suffixes, you can hide them via the Preferences tab. When adding new holdings, use the plus icon to add additional rows to create items with different call numbers. The barcode field is where the item's unique barcode is entered. The item number field is where you can give items a number if your library tracks that. The item number does not appear in the public catalog or on the spine label. If you don't use item numbers, you can hide the field via the Preferences tab. When adding new holdings, use the plus icon to add additional barcode fields to create additional items. When working with multiple call numbers, you can use the Batch Apply section to batch update some of the fields. The bottom section of the Holdings Editor is the Item Attributes. This is where you can specify and edit the characteristics for particular items. You can change the status of the item by selecting a different status from the Status drop-down menu. Certain statuses cannot be assigned through the Holdings Editor, as they require an action to take place for the item to go into that status. For example, items will only go into the status of checked out by checking the item out to a patron. When creating new items, the status defaults to in process unless otherwise specified. The shelving location dropdown will display the available locations. 
you can type the name of a location in to narrow the list. Items will follow the circulate, opaque visible, and holdable parameters of the shelving location they are assigned to. Can circulate is holdable and opaque visible are set to yes by default. These attributes can have their value updated to no to set items to not circulate, be holdable, or be visible in the public catalog if they're in a shelving location that allows items to circulate, be holdable, and be visible. These attributes should always be set to yes unless the specific item should behave differently than what is set for the shelving location. Circulating library is the library the item is currently circulating at. Price is how much the item costs. Evergreen will use this price when billing patrons for lost items, so some libraries may choose to enter the replacement cost in this field rather than what the library actually paid for the item. For libraries using the acquisitions module, the cost attribute will be automatically filled with the billed amount for the item. Libraries not using the acquisitions module may choose to use this field to manually enter the actual amount paid for the item. If your library has items that require deposits, is deposit required can be set to yes and the deposit amount can be entered to have Evergreen automatically bill the deposit amount to the patron on checkout. Circulation modifier is used by Evergreen to determine which circulation and hold policy to apply to items and holds. If the circulation modifier is left blank, the item will follow your default circulation policy at checkout. The circulation modifier list is lengthy and shared by all libraries. We recommend maintaining a local list of the circulation modifiers used by your library that indicates which modifiers you use for particular types of items. Circulation policies may also look at the circulate, reference, shelving location, loan duration, and fine level fields. Evergreen can be set up to apply different circulation policies depending on whether reference is set to yes or no. The loan duration and fine level attributes each have three options that can be configured so that Evergreen applies different loan periods and fines based on what is set in the item record. Leave these attributes set to normal unless you have had support setup policies that use the other options. Age-based hold protection can be used to restrict holds on specified items until they've been in your collection for a set period of time. Age-based hold protection can also be set up directly in your hold policies, so make sure you know whether you are using hold protection at the item level or via your hold policies. Item notes can be used to record information specific to your library's items. These notes can be set as public notes which display in your public catalog. Item alerts can be used to generate alerts at check-in or check-out or both to give staff important information about the item, such as how many DVDs to check for. Some third-party self-check machines cannot display item alerts. Floating is used by libraries or federations that have collections that float between branches or libraries. When a floating item is checked in at a library in its floating group, it will remain at that library rather than go into transit back to the owning library. Only use this attribute if your library is part of a floating collection. Statistical categories are set up by individual libraries or federations to capture information that isn't otherwise included in the item record. StatCats can be set as required, in which case they must be filled in before you're able to save the item. Evergreen will automatically record information, including who created the item and when, who last edited the item and when, and when the item was activated. An item's active date is set when the item is checked in for the very first time. To exit the Holdings Editor, click on Apply All, Save and Exit after making your changes. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, please visit the BC Libraries Cooperative website.